Hello everybody, uh, time for another vlog and what I want to discuss today because it's May the 1st is the Illuminati connection, so the real meaning of May the 1st and this will be linked to another video that I'm going to do closely connected to the year 1666 and why that also ties into this whole May the 1st thing. So to kick off I just like to have a look at this uh, chart. If you look here, the Illuminati, which was founded in 1776, the same year as America, so you know, 1776 they always say, uh, linked to the uh, you know American natal chart and the birth, so-called birth of America, but it's also the birth of the Illuminati, which happened on May the 1st. And why is it that under communism, May the 1st Workers' Day was so important, and in most of the Eastern Bloc and communist countries, they celebrated May the 1st, but now it's sort of come over to other countries as well as a thing. And that's because the Illuminati is strongly linked to communism, which brings us back to this whole kind of um, dynamic where capitalism and communism are really just the same thing, but it's just made to appear different, but they both achieve the same goals and they both benefit the elite. So if you have a look, you'll see that Pluto was at 2827, and the exact date of the Pluto return was actually on the 3rd of April this year. So that was when the Illuminati had their return. And it was the same time as we were having the uh, Jupiter, you'll see it here, there you go, the Jupiter-Neptune conjunction in Pisces. So it's rather strange that the aspect that I associate with the Great Awakening happened at pretty much exact time as the Pluto return for the Illuminati. But it says to us again that we have to focus on this year because this year is an extremely important time for the Illuminati in terms of their goals, their objectives and what outcomes they're going to have. So it's squeaky bum time for them. It's a pivotal time in their development. You know, I've often talked about the Pluto return possibly being the end of America as we know it, but could it be the end of the Illuminati as well? Is it the peak of their achievement or is it their, uh, you know, their denouement, their decline, right? I just wanted to put this up as well, and I'm going to be discussing, some of what I'm discussing today is from um, Dr. Peter Hammond in Cape Town, and so I will link to his podcast where I found a lot of this information, as I also found the information on 1666. I may not post that today, but that's only going to be on BitChute, right? So I'll put the BitChute link on my Getter and Facebook, and I'll post it at the bottom of this video as well for when I do it. Now look at this. This is a painting of the Tower of Babel by Peter Bruegel, who was a kind of Belgian Brussels painter. I don't know about was, maybe he still is. And look, this is the European Parliament building in Strasbourg, and it's totally modelled on the Tower of Babel, even with this unfinished section where you can see the scaffolding incorporated in the actual structure of the building. So they've kind of tried to emulate the Tower of Babel. And here we have another picture. There we've got the stars of the EU and it says Europe, many tongues, one voice. And what was Babylon? It was one tongue split into thousands of voices. It's almost like God said, no, I don't like this one world government. I want decentralization. I want everyone doing their own thing and lots of diversity in terms of cultures and languages. He didn't want it. So they're kind of reverse engineering Babel, aren't they? And here you go, European Union poster, and they put a town of Babel in this European Union poster saying, Europe, many tongues, one voice. So this is harking back to Babylon, and we know the roots of the Illuminati in terms of the mysticism and their reliance on numerology come from Babylon as well. And you can see in that picture, you know, they very definitely, even the EU and the adv adverts are harking back to Babylon, and we'll come more on that. I'd just like to mention the EU flag is yellow and blue, right? If you go over to uh, Hugo Talk's website, a couple of weeks ago he did a very good podcast on how the Rothschilds family have always used yellow and blue. Now yellow and blue, also flag of Ukraine, it's the place of the Khazarian Empire from which a lot of these Illuminati stem. And he went through a whole lot of different things from Rothschild vineyards to their companies to their logos to the gates on their cars as they always use the yellow and blue. And as we know, European Union flag yellow and blue comes up time and time again. So I won't reiterate everything he said, but I do urge you to go over and watch that Hugo Talks just to kind of um, get a grip of that, right? So let's go back here. So the Illuminati was founded on the 1st of May. Who was it founded by, right? It was founded by um, Jacob Frank, who believed he was the reincarnation of Sabeta Izebi, who I'll be talking about in the 1666 video. Amschel Rothschild and Adam Weishaupt. 
Anand Vaishap went to a Jesuit school, but he was actually the son of a Kabbalistic rabbi. So it's kind of an interesting combination there. I know loads of people always talk about the, uh, you know, the Jesuits. So there you have it. So the Tower of Babel, as we see with the U EU there, was all about unifying all people under one government. And I think God was against it. As I say, he doesn't like centralization. Now, right outside the um, EU building, they have a statue of a woman riding a beast. And this harks to Revelations, where there's a talk of a woman on a beast. Um, and in, the, uh, in Revelations, the woman represents the Jewish apostate or Sabbatean leaders, and the beast is the Holy Roman Empire. So like a lot of you know, the EU is a reincarnation of the Holy Roman Empire, or a lot of people think that. And the fact that the beast is riding her represents the uh, Khazarian elite controlling, maybe, the EU, as reflected in the colors of the flag, maybe, who knows. So... Babel, the whole thing about Babel was it was in rebellion to God. And everything that these uh, satanic elite do is in rebellion to God. That's why they have two of these statues actually in Belgium. One outside the EU and there's another in another part of Belgium of the woman riding the beast. So they like to bring up these kind of biblical themes. But at the same time, they like to do it in a perverse way. Okay, so Revelations 13 warns of a satanic conspiracy. Which I think is pretty much what the Illuminati is all about, as will be totally explained in the 1666 video. It said we will live under Satan. There will be a religious beast that has authority over everyone, and they will make people worship that beast, who is also called the false prophet. There will be one world government and one religious order, right? One world religion, one world government, and a unified economic system. That's what's predicted in Revelations. That's exactly what's going on now. And I believe Tony Blair is heavily involved in this one world government. Well, why wouldn't he be? You know, if ever there's a, something bad going on, that guy turns up like a bad penny. Okay. So it says everyone has to take the mark of the beast. We know that's why you get the mark on your right hand in order to buy and sell, etc., etc. And the mark of the beast is the name of a man at 666. Those of, with insight will be able to tell what it is. So let's just go back to the Illuminati. One of the goals of the Illuminati was to corrupt society, corrupt the morals of society. And that's where Hollywood has been very important. Just look at this whole Johnny Depp, Amber Heard, trial that's going on all the, the lunacy the insanity the debauchery everything was disgusting base almost satanic and vile I, as you know if you if you followed that at all now another way they did this is through the encyclopedia britannia so those of us who are old enough to remember world book encyclopedia which was one i had and encyclopedia britannica i didn't have that one but encyclopedia britannica was particularly designed to create a non-Christian world view, just like it was a forerunner of Wikipedia now, which now o openly slanders the great Christians like the Calvins and the modern Luthers, etc., etc. It encourages secularism. And Britannia was actually founded by the banking elite, or they funded it, should I say. And that was on behalf of kind of the Sabbatean worldview, which is thoroughly anti-Christian and very very Crowley-esque as well. Crowley was a, a later incarnation of this whole thinking. So let's look at the stated goals um, as stated in the Communist International in 19, the 1920s, because these are pretty much the same as the stated goals of the Illuminati. So what did they want to do? They wanted to turn the cinemas of the West into temples of learning to replace the church, to replace morality with debauchery. They infiltrated Hollywood. Uh, Stalin said the whole goal of Hollywood was to saturate society with perverted pedophilic uh, content, right? There was to be a um, one world government. With the UN is the most visible version of that. And behind the UN was the Council of Foreign Relations, of which Keir Starmer is a member. And every American president, apart from Trump and Reagan, were members of the CFR post-Hoover, that is. So... The UN, founded by Rockefeller, also was to be key to this plan. And Freemasonry would begin to um, dominate religious leaders. And now we've seen that moves over. Freemasonry was controlling the leaders. But now it's the World Economic Forum. It's almost more open now. And then, of course, we had the Bilderberg Group as well, which were the heads of state, heads of tech, heads of media, heads of industry. And they planned wars, recessions, all with the purpose of increasing their wealth. 
So as we said, the, the Illuminati was founded by Angela Rothschild, Jacob Frank, and Adam Weisha, who I said was the son of a Kabbalistic rabbi and uh, was brought up in the Jesuit tradition. He was educated as a Je Jesuit. Now, what were the stated goals of the Illuminati? To end the family. Also, like communism, you can see that happening now with the whole transgender, LBTQ, just demoralizing people, um, funding single mothers. You can see the end of the family. There's no value placed on family, except I believe Vladimir Putin had a very big conference in Moscow to support and promote family and family values. So, you know, I just think in Russia at the moment, apparently they, um, Putin is building loads of churches, partly as restitution for churches uh, destroyed under Bolshevism. He's got a huge printing of Bibles. They're putting Bibles in all the hotels. And this is kind of seems to be on the surface a revival of Christianity, which would be almost a thumbing your their nose at the Illuminati, because that is exactly what they do not want. The Illuminati wanted the end of nationalism and of individual governments, particularly Christian governments, the end of all Christian monarchies, the end of property rights, which we know, key goal of Marx. They're, they wanted world government, obviously, the end of religion, we said, end of marriage. That's why we see, you know, everything that's going on there as well, one sex or no sexes. Compulsory communal education. Remember what Hillary Clinton, who's totally owned by the cult and was trained by that guy, uh, Saul Alinsky, she said, takes a village to raise a child. Yeah, that's that kind of thinking. They want, and this is all the same as the Communist Manifesto of 1848, written by Engels and Marx. Obviously, it's based on this. It's nothing new because they said property taxes would end property rights. So what this guy, Dr. Hammond, was saying is when you look at Downton Abbey, the, the you know, and you go around all these stately homes in England and now they are either part of national heritage, they are spas or they're tourist attractions. What happened to them? Well, you, you can't have property rights if they're property taxes, because then if you can't pay the taxes, you can have your property taken away. And that's what happened to a lot of the stately homes under the um, Labour government of someone I can't remember. When property, property taxes went up so high that people ended up having to forfeit their property. So property taxes are an attack on property rights. Marx and Engels did not want property rights because it's part of communism. And what do the World Economic Forum say? You will earn nothing and you will be happy. I tell you what else is an attack on property, sky high electricity bills, people not being able to pay their mortgage, higher interest rates, young students saddled with debt by doing useless degrees at university who can never own a home. It's all part of that. What else did they want? They wanted um, progressive taxes on which is a tax on productivity because the more people earn the more they tax you know progressive right that word is so contorted um you know the bible actually forbids property taxes because in christianity they want you to have property rights and like i say you lose your land if you can't pay they were totally against inheritance tax marx and engels they wanted to confiscate the property of immigrants mm, what's happening now with them um, Roman Abramovich and all these Russians having their property confiscated. Hmm, but like that, isn't it? The uh, Marx and Engels, now they were meant to be key communists, but look what was in the manifesto. A central bank should be established, credit should be centralized, and there should be a monopoly on the money supply. Hmm, central banks, you know, central banks all over the world, the Bank of International Settlements, all owned by the same cabal. Is that really capitalism? No, it's communism. And they were going to use capitalism to destroy the free market and to destroy free enterprise in order to pave the way to communism. So do you see how capitalism and communism work together and they both work against freedoms, property rights and free enterprise? OK, they also talked about um, factories and the means of production being owned by the state. But who owns the state? If the state borrow money, the state are owned by the Rothschilds. So the means of production are not owned by a democratically or otherwise um, elected state or selected a government. They're actually owned by the Rothschilds because the Rothschilds lend money to the state. The state use all these things as collateral. So who really owns then all the property? This whole thing about, oh, the state. Oh, it's better if the state owns it, you know, because that's fairer. No, because someone owns the state because the state can't run without money. And the state historically controlled and totally in the clutches of Rothschild and the bankers. So there you go. Uh, it also said people should be put to work by the state, told where and how to work. Oh, wonderful. And they didn't want any family farming 
or no family farms. They wanted basically um, slave labor forces to run collectivized farms or state controlled farms. This is basically what caused the Holodomor, that absolute disaster which caused starvation. And you can see that in the UK, they're offering farmers money to retire. They're offering farmers money to rather grow trees. So they're kind of going against this farming. Gates buying up lots of farmland all plays into this. So it's all happening. Um, they also wanted vertical integration of farms and food production. So anytime there's vertical integration, that means the, you know, the, the producer owns the distributor, owns the wholesaler, you know, this kind of thing. That is part of communism. Of course, they also wanted um, state education. So um, let's see. So what I'm going to do next, that's the end of part one. And in part two, I'm going to be talking about Sabbateism. And we're going to be looking at the history of this guy, Sabati Zebi, and how he started off this whole movement, which is very much a part of what we are contending with and battling with now. It's what inspired and gave rise to the Illuminati. Obviously, it's part of something more ancient stemming from Babylon, but it helps fill in all the gaps. And as I say, that will be in Bichut, so I hope you enjoy it. <laughs>